What's going on everyone? Hello, welcome back to another video and today we have Ask Poker Staples number three. Didn't end up streaming yesterday so there's gonna be no highlight videos so I thought instead of that we'll do an Ask Poker Staples show. You guys left a bunch of questions from the last time below the YouTube video. If you wanna get a question answered for the next episode, all you have to do is type ask, hashtag Ask Poker Staples and ask your question. You can do that here on YouTube, you know, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And uh, yeah, I'd love to answer. So we're gonna jump in on this very, very hot Canada day. We don't have air conditioning in this house and it is cooking. So I am sweating a little bit. <laughs> All right. So, uh, first couple questions, and there were, there were similar questions for the first four. They were all very similar, which was basically like, I'll read the first one here. I've been playing live poker for 10 plus years and I've been able to grind out a living for the last three years. Played multiple events at Run It Up Arena this year and I realized my game is lacking in the math department. Do you have any tips or any book suggestions to improve on the math side? Uh, second comment, hey Stables, do you have any recommendations for the average poker player that wants to get better? Um, hey, consider myself recreational, how can I improve? Do you have any books you can recommend? It's a very, very common question. And, and here's what I would say. So. The first thing you need to know uh, if you want to get better at poker is like, what is your skill level? Where are you at in the totem pole in terms of like poker knowledge, right? Because when you're just starting out in poker, you can't do a lot of the quantitative work on your own, right? Because you don't have the foundation to know what you're looking for. So starting out, what I did is I watched other good players. I joined a training site uh, back then, deucescrack.com was one of the only ones around. I joined that training site and I watched videos there and I tried to learn from the other players, not just like copying what they did, but trying to understand why they did what they did. So that's what I'd recommend for most people. Watch Twitch, watch YouTube, check out my coach's site. I'll link up in the description down below, maxvalue.com with a dash in the middle. Again, I'll put it in the description. Um, you know, watch other good players and try and understand why they're doing what they're doing. Doesn't mean you have to agree with everything, but at least you can understand why, right? The next step that I made in my progression was I got a coach. Uh, my coach back then was Yu-Gi-Oh Pro, his name. Uh, very, very good tournament player, he's still on the grind today. And he was the one that sort of started building the foundation to be able to learn uh, some of these things on my own. He taught me how to use some software to, to study spots and do simulations. And he taught me some of the the equations that I wasn't able to pick up in the videos that, that really helped me grow. Um, so that would be the next step for me if you're sort of ready to get to the next level, look into private coaching, uh, definitely a good option. The third part of that equation, if you're a sort of advanced at poker and you've got some coaching and you have the, the mathematical part down, you've learned that from training videos, you've learned that from coaching, start doing simulations, start using software tools to break down the answers yourself. Uh, look at all the possible hands in poker and, and pick out which ones you're gonna bet here and which ones you're gonna bet here. That is sort of the third step and what the best players in the game are doing, they're doing that sort of quantitative work. So it depends where you're at in your poker, you know, development, your poker career, um, but that was my progression in the game. And just a quick note of books before we go into the next comment. Books I never really got into, I have read a couple, but the thing is a lot of books are kind of crappy. Not all books, but a lot of them because things go outdated in poker. So unless it's grounded in sort of quantitative theory, poker books expire. Uh, online training content is quicker, it's faster, it's on the internet uh, immediately. So I'd recommend that for most people, online material. Okay, so let's go on to the next question. Boris Bogdanov. Why do you prefer MTTs instead of cash games? I've heard some players say that cash games are more profitable and consistent. I like tournaments because they're exciting every single day. Don't get me wrong, I still like cash games too, but the thing with cash games is like, you have the same stack size, you have the same five type of opponents, you have the same sort of pre-flop situation. In tournaments, you have a different structure tournament. You have a different buy-in level. You sometimes have series. You have different stack sizes. You have different stages of the tournament. So it just adds the variety as well as the excitement of okay, the best I could do here is win one buy-in. In a tournament, it's like I could times my investment by 500 or something like that, right? So that's really exciting and fun. And uh, not to mention, I think it's more fun for people to watch on Twitch and YouTube, which is is why, uh, why I continue to play it. So uh, as long as you can handle the variance, the swings that come with, with tournament poker, it's my favorite. All right, Terry Ma, where did you get that colorful painting of the trees over your left shoulder? Is this my left shoulder? Is this that one? Um, this is from a guy, a guy. It's from a guy and uh, he's got stuff. Matthew Hamblin, that's his name. Uh, Etsy.com, he has a store on there. 
Matthew Hamblin, check out his work. Uh, I got it there. It's great. I think he does awesome stuff. Okay. I remembered. Mr. Lucid LJ, I have another one for next week. If you could assemble a dream poker table of nine, including yourself, who would you have on it? So I did a little bit of thinking on this one before. Um, because it's tough. You know, I didn't I didn't really want to pick poker players for the main part. I did pick one. Daniel Negreanu uh, would be someone I put on my table. He, he had a big part of me sort of starting in the game. Um, he's a role model to me to this day in that... He's such a great ambassador for poker, and that's one of my huge goals. So uh, I learn a lot from him, and I would put him on my table. After that, I would take probably four of the people that have had the most inspiration in my life. Uh, not poker players at all. Gary Vaynerchuk is one. He has a YouTube channel here on YouTube, and I've learned so much about business and, and stuff from him. Uh, and I really look as I like his outlook on life. He has a great TED Talk that he did, you know, 10 years ago. Um, so I would put him on the table. Kevin Smith, uh, the movie maker, uh, the podcaster, uh, a lot of you guys will know. Uh, I also took a lot of inspiration from him. Just just do things, just try, just create. Um, and Steve Jobs, who is another person that I know that there's not a lot of Mac fans out there in my immediate community, but uh, I grew up as a big Apple fan and uh, I found him really inspiring. I read his biography and uh, I thought a lot of the ways he looked at the world were really great. Some, some weren't. You know, like the, the being a jerk sometimes, but um, just really inspiring. So I'd put him on the table. And then my last sort of inspiration is one from my childhood, which is Ben Hogan. Uh, that's a golfer that golfed back in the 50s, but his story is pretty remarkable. I've also read his biography. Uh, I'd put him on the table. All right. And then for my last three, <laughs> it's a little bit of a sellout. Uh, I'd choose Plato, Socrates, and Nietzsche. Uh, because I think it'd be really interesting to see philosophers play poker and how they interact and how they talk through hands and stuff. Uh, I was in philosophy in university. Philosophy was the most interesting field to me. It still is very interesting. I try not to think about it too much just because it's like scary. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's it's not always the fun to think, funnest to think about. But that's my tale. Danny DeGrano, Gary Vaynerchuk, Kevin Smith, Steve Jobs, Plato, Socrates, Nietzsche, and Ben Hogan. That's it. It's not a very common poker table. It's the one I'd choose. Okay, uh, from Alexis Salen Lawson. Ever considered joining a sports team? I find it much easier to work out than to be solo running or doing weights. Much more enjoyable get to meet people. I have thought about it. Schedule is the problem, man. I can't really work it into my life because it's just hectic. It's crazy. There's like deadlines to meet with videos and, and streaming and stuff. So uh, I really like being able to schedule my own time and just do it at my house. So there's the least amount of, of wasted time. It really works for me with a trainer coming to my house. It's working really well. So I'm just going to keep doing that. But I would like to golf more. Golf has been a lot of fun. Okay, um, Rock and Roller's Gambling Channel says, Fancy a friendly 100 NL heads up game? No, man, you sound very confident. You're probably better than me. I don't know if I want to play you, man. I will pass, but thank you for the offer. Uh, PJ Mazona. Hi, Jamie. Have you ever thought about creating a brand, almost like Run It Up, but where you recruit other players to play under the staple name? So you have a bunch of mini staplers and you're the kingpin industrial stapler. In terms of like creating a brand, I am trying to do that. You know, we have a website, we have YouTube, we have the Twitch stream. Jason Somerville, uh, who a lot of you guys will know from Twitch or hear from YouTube, um, he does a really great job and he's ahead of the game and he does things well. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get to, to where he is. Um, in terms of like staking, where I'm the kingpin and then I have a bunch of mini staplers that play on, under my money and I get a percentage of the profit, um, that's a common thing that happens in poker. It's not a great idea for me just because, again, time is an issue. You know, you have to devote a lot of time to improving those players, coaching those players, making sure everything's okay with them and they're playing the right stakes and that, you know, mentally everything's good. I would rather invest that time talking with you guys on YouTube, talking with the people on my Twitch stream, talking on Discord, those sort of things um, to invest in the community of people that watch me. So it's not a feasible thing for me, but I think it's a good idea. I would do it if I had more if I had more time. If the day was longer, <laughs> I would do it. All right, Jacob Martinez, if you could have coaching for a day from any poker player, dead or alive, who would it be? That's a really good question. Um, I would basically choose one of the very best cash game players in the world. Uh, I think Doug Polk is who I'd choose. He's also a streamer on Twitch. Um, I've had the opportunity to talk to him for five, six hours, even about a little bit of poker, which is great. So, um, but I think he is, in terms of No Limit Hold'em, one of the best, if not the best, I mean, I don't have a, I don't have a baseline to evaluate who's the best at poker, uh, but I, I would probably choose him for a day of poker because I think he could really set me on the right track. Um, and he plays the the biggest stuff, and he's willing to play anyone. 
Okay, James Middleton, how long were you playing poker? How much money had you made before you saw poker as a viable career option? Well, when I started playing poker about six years ago, I was 18, so I mean, I was, not that all 18 year olds were, you know, are stupid, but I was, I had roses in my eyes, right? I won $2,700 in a tournament, and I was like, all right, this is my job now, and I quit my job. <laughs> It's like, okay, well, I'm not gonna work at the golf course anymore. I am now a poker pro. Obviously, I wasn't really a poker pro, um, but I didn't have a job and I haven't had a job since. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, just over time, I think I, I developed a sense of like, oh, okay, so this is how much life costs and this is how not good at poker I am and here's where I need to get to and stuff, but I was able to survive from the beginning. So basically I, I had this inward arrogance slash confidence uh, within myself when I was 18 that like I can just do it. Um, so, yeah. All right, Cap Capitonia Mickle. Why do you play MTTs and not cash? Oh, I think I, I think I already got that one. They're just, they're just fun. The story, the story, man, it's great. Um, all right, Monster 4D. Every poker player knows the biggest spot they've won and lost, what is yours? So I actually had to look back a little bit on this one. Nothing really stood out to me too much. I think the biggest cash game of pot was, cash game pot of one was on Poker Night in America. That should be on YouTube somewhere. You can find it on CBS Sports as well. Uh, I think I won a 20K pot, maybe a little bit more against Maria Ho. I had aces, it's not a very interesting hand. We got all in on the flopper of the turn, uh, but I had a full double up for around $20,000. In that game, I actually ended up winning 30K over the two days, so. That was obviously huge in a lineup with Danny Negreanu, Phil Helmuth, Esfandiari, Phil Locke. Uh, Elki, Nananoko, uh, Jason Somerville, Dan O'Brien, Jimmy Kersetter, Scott Ball. Did I say Nananoko? I said Elki, right? And, and more, and more. Uh, so it, it was a crazy game, and, and I think I was the second biggest winner or something, so <laughs> that was ridiculous. You guys can find that on CBS Sports or, or here on YouTube. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Okay. Next up, Hilary Parn. Hi, Jamie, have you, if you ever plan to come to Estonia, then let me know, okay, I will. I'll show you around, also teach you how to pronounce the weird squiggly things, okay. One more question for Ask Poker Stables video. What do you think about veganism? So this is a tough one. You know, I've gone a little bit back and forth about this and I remember having some lectures in university about it. It's a very polarizing issue, obviously. There's a lot of people that are hardcore on yes, hardcore on no. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit more of a nuanced approach to it and say, I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, you know, I remember going into university thinking that no one was ever going to eat meat or animal products ever again, because I thought it was unethical. I, th I thought it was something that was wrong and like we're eating another species, it doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, and then I also visited some lectures, one specifically where, where animals were sort of looked at in a different, uh, a different light than I'd, I'd thought of normally, which was, you know, a pigeon doesn't have feelings. It doesn't feel anything, it doesn't have relationships. A pigeon is basically like a biological machine where it eats food and that's all a pigeon does. Um, so, I got, you know, it's easy, easy to project the idea of like sadness and, um, you know, destruction uh, from a human perspective, but I started to look at it like, okay, maybe there's a little bit of a difference here and maybe I don't feel as bad and, and it's a little bit, more gray as to what is valuable and what isn't. And, and then there's another debate of like, okay, well, what if we are breeding these animals uh, to be eaten so they wouldn't have lived at all unless we brought them to life to later, you know, be killed uh, to be eaten, but they wouldn't have had any chance at all. So there would be less life in the world. So, um, you know, is it a negative that we have to kill them, but we created them in the first place? And of course that has all sorts of problems. Like you could apply the same thing to humans, etc. Like there's a lot of issues there, but the answer is I don't know, right? Uh, I could be living my life in a hypocritical way. One thing I know for sure is that I think suffering and pain is something that is not okay. Um, and I understand there's a lot of that in the meat industry, industry specifically um, that I am hypocritical about. I, I don't do enough to, to think about it, but in terms of like my overall stance on it, I'm not sure. It's something I need I need to think more on because it, it's it's a really tough problem for me. And I don't think it's black and light, white, like a lot of people want it to be. Um, you know, I don't think it's a black and white situation. Mr. Bonus One, hey Jimmy, if you could start playing poker right now, how many dollar bankroll would you start with and what kind of games would you play? Cash game tourneys, which stakes? Question mark. Uh, that's a tough question because like, 
right now in terms of like how much money I have, well, I, I already have the skills I have. So I'd just be like, oh, okay, well, I have the same bankroll basically, you know, um, that, that I have now. Um, but I think the question you're sort of getting at is like, what do I need to start with, right? Like what's the bankroll I would start with? What would I do? What would I play, etc.? And I think the answer is really whatever you want. You can start with for free, play free rolls, work your way up into real money games. You can start with a $20 deposit and be playing two cent tournaments, 10 cent tournaments, 25 cent tournaments. Um, you can start your way with $50,000, you know, say you make a million dollars a year, you're balling rich, like $50,000 is fine recreation for you and you can jump right into the high stakes and, and learn from there. It's really up to you. There is no right or wrong answer. And the same thing works for what games you want to play. You can play tournaments, you can play cash, you can play sit and goes, you can play spin and goes, you can play Hold'em, you can play Omaha, you can play Stud, you can play Raz, you can play Deuce to Seven, Triple Draw, whatever you want, man, it's all open, right? So the important thing is that you get in there you develop a plan for how you're gonna manage your money and your bankroll, what goals you wanna do, and then you execute that plan. But there is no right or wrong answer. All right, Justin, thanks for the video, Jamie. No problem, man, that was three weeks ago, but no problem at all. When you started on PokerStars, what stakes did you start at? I made three $100 deposits back in the day. I was working minimum wage jobs, so I didn't have a lot of money to spare. I didn't understand bankroll management or anything, so I'd pretty much just play $10 in under tournaments, I'd play you know, $5 cash game tables, I'd play five and $7 sit and goes, I played Hold'em, I played Omaha, I played eight game, I played all sorts of stuff. Eventually I found my success in tournaments and I stuck around there, but I tried everything in the beginning. Andrew Tartiern, is poker your only job? Sort of. Um, Poker has been my only job up from six years ago till about 19 months ago. And then I started streaming on Twitch, which doesn't seem like much of a job, um, but as things to start to develop, you know, it definitely becomes like a business, right? And a lot of my time every week goes towards developing my Twitch stream, uh, investing in my audience, trying to devote time to them, figure out ways to grow. And now this YouTube channel as well is the same thing, right? Where we're putting up two to three videos a day on this channel and very soon two videos a day on my gaming channel. Spoilers coming soon. Um, so I, I would say I have two jobs now, right? I have um, Jamie Staples, sort of the ambassador and, and the brand that I'm working to grow all the time. And then there's the poker professional as well, which has always been there for the last six years. So I would say those are my two jobs, but in terms of from when that started till I was 18, I haven't had a job since. Just poker. As a Phil, ask Poker Staples, how was your transition to becoming a pro? E.g. was working a normal job before and how did you balance work in poker until you were good enough to go pro? Plus any advice for young aspiring pros who are working the nine to five trying to hit the pro goal? You should know when it's my time to take the shot and quit to do poker full time, thanks. So as a Phil, as I've sort of mentioned in this Ask Poker Staples episode, I was, I was not smart about it because I didn't know anything. I was 18 and like I had no responsibilities. I lived at home like I was gonna go to school. I had my parents as a safety net. There was, you know, I was just like, I go for it, okay? And then everyone's, you know, all my friends and my family sort of rolled their eyes. They're like, all right, I mean, do your thing, whatever. Um, and it worked out, which was great. But I mean, obviously not an advisable thing. So it really depends on what your situation is outside of poker. If you are a person that has a family and you have two kids and you have a mortgage, um, are you gonna wanna go pro with $10,000? No, I mean, please, please don't do that, right? Like you, you, you need to develop um, some safety because you have responsibilities, right? If you are a college student and you are deciding whether you want to get a summer job or you just want to try poker and you're going to be fine either way because you have student loans or whatever, like that's a very different situation. So figure out exactly what is your monthly nut, okay? How much money do you need to live the standard of living you want to live uh, as a poker pro to start? Uh, your rent, your food, your cell phone plan, your recreation, your travel, your unplanned expenses, etc. Figure that out and have at least six months before you go. Uh, and then if you have that six months plus your bankroll on top, then I would say give it a try. Um, and that answer is going to be different for different people. You know, some people are going to want even more, even more. They're going to want a year saved up. Some people are going to be in a situation where like, okay, two months is enough because I'm, I'm in a low responsibility part of my life. So figure that out for you and, uh, and good luck. August E. Stangeland. 
Hi, Poker Tables. What kind of benefits do you get as Team Pro, discount sponsor, buy-ins, or monthly wage? I wish I could tell you this. this. is also a really common question. I can't tell you guys what I, you know, make from Poker Stars as being a member of Team Online. Obviously, there's some sort of relationship between me and them, being a sponsored player. Um, but it just like makes sense if you think about any company, right? You know, my other sponsorships with Poker Market or, or my, my relationship with Twitch. You know, uh, with people subscribing and, and playing ads and stuff. Companies don't want to share this information because if it's out there in the public, well then how do they negotiate with other people, right, that are getting sponsorships? So pretty much all of these contracts, no matter what what field you're in, are gonna have like non-disclosure. You can't talk about it. Um, and it's the same thing here. So basically what I can tell you is that, you know, um, what I get for being a part of Team Online is obviously I'm compensated in some way and I have the biggest and best poker site in the world backing me. Uh, and what do they get from me? Well, I get to play on Poker Stars. I get to let the people that watch my show know about Poker Stars and, and try and help promote it to those people. Um, and they get to use my sort of name and likeness, um, you know, in certain ways to, to help grow their poker site, right? So that, that's the basic thing, but I can't give you any, uh, any figures. Hopefully that answers it for you. I wish I could, because if I could, I'd just be like, oh, here it is, but I can't. And the last question of today is, I play the big 11 40K guaranteed every day. I cash 50% of the time, that's insane. I definitely don't cash that tournament 50% of the time. I cash it maybe 19% or something, 20% maybe. I mean, cash percentage, I know this is not your question, but cash percentage is probably not a great metric in terms of how well you're doing. 50% is a lot and that means you're probably doing great. But I would focus more on return and investment because you don't want to just limp into the money, you want to win. So focus a little bit on that. What are your top three tips for tournaments like this one? Thanks, no problem, Josh. Here's the three tips I came up with for this video. Patience is number one. Big 11 is a smaller tournament, right? People are in there gambling, they're not patient. Um, they wanna mix it up, they wanna play hands. So be patient, you don't need to win the tournament in the first hour, relax, take it easy. The second thing is don't be scared money, fight for pots. That goes a little bit against the first one, but as the tournament progresses, um, you can't be thinking about getting the min cash, all of the money in these tournaments is up top. I just got seventh place in this tournament the other day. Um, you know, I earned $700, first place was 6,600. I'm in cash is 19 bucks, right? You need to fight for the deep finishes. So don't be afraid once you get to the money stages. And the third tip is the later it goes, the more you can bluff. So in the beginning, you can't. Like I said, people are mixing it up. They're doing their things. You're not gonna be able to pull off these big bluffs, right? But when you get down to the final 12, there's sure to be two or three people that have never been in this situation before. And they're really scared. They wanna ladder up the pay scale because $300, $500, $1,000 jumps are huge. That's massive, right? You need to take advantage of that. So try and go for the win in these deep spots. Be able to bluff when you're deep in the tournament. That's what I'd say. So that's gonna be it for Ask Poker Stables number three. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, if you wanna get a question answered, use the hashtag Ask Poker Stables in YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, however you guys want to get a hold of me, okay? Like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think about the video, and we will see you all next time.